Hi guys, welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. On this week's show we have, uh, started off with the Drunk Tech Review, a quick mention for those guys. Uh, I'll explain why in just a second if you haven't worked it out already. Um, then moving on we've got a couple of new flare bottles that I've been trying out, uh, liquor bottles that I've been trialling to see how well they work out in flare. And then on to this week's update on the Flare project. Uh, we're looking at Roadhouse's rules and exactly how uh, you can maximise your points in a Flare competition. So let's get straight on with the show. Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangwell. So guys, if you've not heard of it before, the Drunk Tech Review, it's a channel over on YouTube. Uh, the guy in charge of it is uh, Misha Polak, uh, he's a, a guy over there, uh, and they make some really, really funny videos. Essentially, they uh, take the latest technology, they review it after a few drinks, and uh, give their thoughts on it. So obviously they go off on a bit of a tangent, and there's some sort of really weird kind of um, stuff that comes up in the shows. Um, the guy there, Kong, is absolutely hilarious, uh, love his stuff on the show, um, but I just wanted to give him a bit of a shout out, it's brilliant fun to watch, uh, they have done a few shows that are not necessarily tech related, so if you want to keep it bartendery, uh, they have got a review on there for some uh, whiskey stones, so you can try them out, and sort of actually quite scientifically uh, testing different uh, ways of chilling your drinks without using ice that's going to melt into it and dilute the drink. Obviously, as we know, uh, ice dilution is important in some drinks, but not in everything. Uh, but the t-shirt that I'm wearing today, this is their, um, their kind of promotional stuff that they've got out there, the Drink More Tech, and I love it. So I just wanted to... Uh, to mention this to you guys, it is not safe for work stuff, so if you happen to work in an office and might be trying to watch it there, uh, just be careful, uh, although most of us working in bars, not going to be a massive issue. So, Misha, um, I do drink to the Drunk Tech Review. Cheers. Keep it up. And if you want to get involved with the Flare Project in any way, if you've got any ideas or you want to give us a shout out, anything like that, absolutely fine. Love to hear from you. Cheers, Misha. And in case you're wondering, guys, I've just toasted Misha's show with this, which is Brugal and Neo and Coke. Uh, very, very tasty. Um, and this is from the guys over at Brugal Rum. Uh, who've provided me with a couple of bottles to uh, have a play around with. Now, this one, obviously, I've not been flaring too much with, as it's still got a bit of rum in there, uh, but I managed to empty out this, which is the um, the Especial, a little bit quicker. Uh, so I basically decanted it over into another bottle so I could have a little play around with it. Um, now, having a look at this new bottle, uh, Brugal have repackaged their rums quite recently, and uh, this bottle is slightly squared, which you might think makes it tricky to play with, not at all uh, from what I found. Uh, it comes actually, as you see with the Aneo, it does actually come with this netting on it, and I thought that was going to cause all sorts of problems when I was flaring. didn't actually, um, and that includes on this, which is the Especial, this is their white rum. Um, didn't cause me any problems when I was flaring. It actually made it slide in and out of the tin a little bit easier. I think it didn't. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it jamming in there at all. Um, the shape of the bottle is lovely. It's quite like, and I uh, hesitate to say it, but uh, your competitors, Brugal, it's quite like the old style Bacardi bottles. Um, so if any of you guys are struggling with the new Bacardis, you might want to try out Brugal. It's a really nice bottle to be flaring with. Um, so, obviously, during this, I've just put up some uh, some flare stuff on the screen with the Brigal Ball. The other one that I tried, which I've been wanting to play with for a little while, is this. Now, it looks pretty plain, because this is from the 86 Liquor Company. And this is uh, probably the first bottle that's really been thought through with bartenders in mind. Now, it's got uh, grip points right here on the neck. It's got another ridge just here right at the top of the neck. It's got a grip point right here, um, and also if you look on the back, 
it's got a, um, a gradient so you can tell when you're doing your stock takes um, exactly how much is left in the bottle. It makes it much easier for you. Now, this hasn't been designed for flare as such. Uh, I think Steve Schneider and the guys at um, Employees Only in New York were involved in the redesign. Um, it's not a flare bar as such, although they do a lot of the showmanship with the jiggers and the mixology stuff, which, if any of you guys are out there, would be willing to show me a few of those moves. I'd really appreciate it for the flare project, so let me know. Um, but again, I actually really enjoy flaring with this bottle. It does come out of the tin differently from other stuff. Uh, it's a little bit wider on the body, but it's got a lovely long neck and these grip points. This actually makes it really, really easy to catch on the neck. Um, nice wide base as well, so it's really good for stalling. So I just wanted to give you guys a bit of a, a heads up on these. I want to thank uh, Luke Todd Wood from uh, Brugal and Maxim uh, Drinks, who is one of the sponsors actually of the Masters of Flair uh, bartending competition that's coming up at the end of August. Uh, he provided me with the Brugal to test out for you guys, uh, and actually the Brugal Cobbler has gone on the website this week, so check that drink out as well. Very, very tasty. And the 86 Liquor Company, now they do a whole bunch of different spirits that all use this bottle. Um, this one was actually provided to me uh, by the guys that were representing 86 Lekker Company down at Imbibe Live. Uh, and the drinks that they offer in there are the Aylesbury Duck Vodka. Now I've tried this at Imbibe, it's absolutely stunning, it's a really buttery kind of uh, feel to it. Really nice, not what you expect from a normal vodka. Uh, Ford's Gin. Again, very, very mixable, really, really tasty gin. Uh, and again, this has been designed for bartenders, so the gin itself is designed for mixing into your cocktails. It's not designed to be like a standalone gin as much. Um, the Canabrava Rum, I haven't had a chance to try that one yet. Uh, by the time I got to these guys at Imbibe, I'd had so many samples that I was actually trying to ease off a little bit. Um, there was so much to try there. It was an amazing day, but... It's. Uh, I think next year I'd try and get down for both days and have a hotel overnight just so that I could spread out some of those tastings a little bit more. Uh, and the final one that they do is the Tequila Cabeza, which I've probably said wrong. Um, but uh, I didn't try that one while I was there either, but my colleague um, Dan Upton did. Uh, now, I've worked with him at TGR Fridays in the past. He's gone on to New Pastures. I'm not exactly sure where he's working anymore, but he was really, really impressed with the uh, with the tequila. Um, so, check those out, guys. These are all available in the UK now. Uh, I know the 86 liquor stuff is available a lot more in the US. Um, the Brugal, we saw a lot of in Spain when I was over there. Uh, it's not as massive of a brand in the UK, but I do think it's going to get bigger and bigger in the coming months and the next couple of years, so uh, wicked bottles to try out if you fancy a little bit something different for your flair. Now to the main um, sort of chunk for this podcast, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the flair project, it's going to come up in every week's shows, um, and this week I want to talk mainly about um, how to kind of interpret the rules for your competition and make the most out of exactly what the judges are looking for. Now the Flair project itself, uh, I obviously introduced it last week and thank you for all you guys that have signed up. If you haven't signed up yet to get the direct updates for the Flair project and to get really involved with this, go to theflareproject.com, that's all one word, theflareproject.com uh, and you can just pop your email in there, I'll send you all the updates, you will know first about when cool stuff is happening. Uh, I've had some really cool ideas about what we're going to do with the music and some of the sound stuff for this year's um, competition routine. But if you want to follow this along, it is going to give you a really good guide, a really solid guide, I hope, um, to how to prepare well for a competition. Um, it's very easy to kind of just throw some moves together or just think about your routine and not think about how that fits into the specific competition. Um, but what we're actually going to do this year is really kind of drill down into where you can get the most points based on the competition that you're entering, um, absolutely maximise what you can do with the music, get the perfect music for your routines, and that's something we're going to address in a, in a future show. So for now, we're going to have a look at the uh, Roadhouse's uh, Roadhouse World Flare 
rules, information and regulations. So I have it up on the screen here. You can probably just about see that. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, it's like an 11 page document. Uh, the last page is empty. The last two pages before that are um, basically to submit your drinks on uh, prior to the competition. So we've got eight pages worth of stuff we need to actually pay attention to at this stage. So starting off, uh, Roadhouse rules explained in 20 seconds and uh, this is what it says on their website so you will have five minutes to make one working flare drink of your own creation make one exhibition flare drink of your own creation use Stolichnir for one pour, a stall and a move during the working flare provide a printed copy of your recipes Use two liquors in each recipe. Use three liquors if you use slash flare with Malibu. And provide your own bottles, tins, and specialist equipment or ingredients. So that's kind of the quick overview version of the Roadhouse Rules. We will get more into the meat of it in a sec because you'll find a lot of people just look at that overview. They don't bother getting into the meat of it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to really concentrate on the meat of it and see where the see where the, the points live it's so easy to kind of go in with this is my routine so this is what I'm going to do we're going to look at the rules in depth and we're going to see exactly where you can maximize these so the other little bit that it says down here the roadhouse competition is from January to October most months are open to virtually everyone so please check the flare calendar for a competition date that suits you it honestly couldn't be any simpler so basically um, I need to get myself um, registered for the competition. That's what it's saying. Don't just show up on the day. Uh, and the next page is indeed exactly how to enter the competition. So that gives you a really in-depth kind of, here's the information you need to provide. And then it gives you a little bit of information on how to get to London, especially for the international competitors. Uh, right, page three, and we're into the interesting stuff. So, Flair Scorecard. Um, they've divided the points up into sections, so starting off with difficulty, 50 points, the judges will mark you on how difficult your moves are compared with the other competitors. You will have to land your moves or sequences for, in your routine for the points to be counted and awarded. Difficulty also involves the structure of the routine and not just the moves themselves. So, we've got 50 points allocated for the difficulty of your routine. Next up, uh, technicality of your moves. It's another 50 points. Many flare bartenders have a certain level of difficulty in their routines, but not all difficulty moves are technical. It's important we highlight and mark the best of flair in the world for the technicality of their moves in a separate category. Simple exchanges could be replaced with taps, spins, or bumps. So this is basically... Um, this is really nice if you already have a solid routine you can basically take your solid routine and you can add individual little flourishes to it is what this is saying so instead of just um, popping your tin say you, you're throwing your bottle from your right hand to your left hand and you're passing your tin in your hand if you could do another spin with it in the other direction so you basically got both objects doing something interesting that will get you more points than just passing it this is what it's saying so any way that you can add more movement and more skills and more um, uh, more moves basically into your routine uh, the better so for me immediately I'm thinking these guys that are doing huge setups with six items being launched and then six items collected you'll if you've heard my previous podcasts now I have a little bit of a uh, a thing about um, the current flair stuff. I mean, I completely respect the skill involved, but I don't enjoy watching these huge moves of like five or six tins and a bottle going up, and then they're all collected, and then you reset, and then you do the next big move. What this is basically saying to me is that if you're doing a kind of reset in between, unless you're kind of making that really interesting, you're going to kind of lose a little bit on that section I would think. Originality of moves, 50 points, well I'm gonna suffer here if I'm getting everyone to submit moves for me but yeah, that's kind of the fun and it's an originality to the routine I hope they will think. Are all of your moves original or are they generic? Do all your sequences start and end the same? 
who else can do your moves? Promoting originality should be at the forefront of a bartender's routine. Judges will want to see new creative moves and sequences. So, basically, don't just um, Google a Christian Del Pesh routine and learn it. I, I think that's kind of what they want to get away from. Um, I, I don't think many people are literally lifting someone's routine and putting it in, but there will certainly be moves that come from different places, and certain moves that everyone does, and certain moves that are only done by a few people, or signature moves that people have. So that's interesting. Um, variety, another 50 points. It's important to have a variety of moves and a variety of objects. Picking up object after object can sometimes lose you points, Due to repetition and lack of momentum, you need to land your moves for the points to be credited and it's important for the smoothness of transitions to be fluid. Judges will also be looking for what you do with your bottles once you have executed your moves. So essentially they don't want to see the same move with the same thing, they want to see a variety of objects used and they want to see <clears throat> you basically making the most of everything that you've got there. If you can do a move with your ice and you can do a move with your ice scoop and you can catch a glass in your ice scoop and you can you know, throw a full glass over your back and you can, you know, all of these little things uh, but using different stuff. You know, if you do a bit of flair with your muddler or if you do a bit of flair with uh, your garnish fruits maybe. I don't know. Uh, but essentially the more we can do that makes the routine not just a bottle and a tin will help. So that's cool. Uh, execution, 50 marks. Do you land your moves clean and are you in control? Do you fumble your moves or guide your objects? Are you composed during your routine or is it messy? Any professional performer with a high standard needs to make sure their execution is clean and tidy to all of those watching. So basically this is saying know your routine and don't be fumbling stuff. You want to look like you're in control and uh, for any fl Friday's bartenders out there, you will know the swan theory that applies 100% to this category. So you're, um, you basically need to make sure that regardless of how badly your routine is going in your head, you look completely calm, completely together and completely happy with what's happening. Um, so showmanship. You, as a performer, you are going to be judged on the performance and your show. This is just as important as the flair itself, and the two go hand in hand. It's important to smile and look like you're trying, uh, like look like you are having fun. Try to be unique and pick music that will help promote your personality and allow you to stand out. So this is kind of the show, the entertainment factor, and anything that you can do to make your routine just look cooler and entertain the crowd and engage the crowd. Basically, you want music that people enjoy and suits your routine and suits your personality as a performer. Cool. Uh, choreography. So 50 marks for this. When it comes to your performance and putting on a show, do you, you need to work on all aspects of your routine in time to your chosen music. Do you feel the full five minutes comfortably or are you rushing your drink and panicking towards the end of the routine? Are you always in time with your music or and does your music suit your show? So this kind of ties in again with the showmanship stuff. Um, and basically making sure that everything is congruent so you don't want anything that kind of stands out in people's heads and is like, what's this all about? Not quite sure. You know, everything needs to match up and everything needs to fit into the theme of your show. Um, and then there's uh, two other chunks at the bottom of here which says working flare drink 20 points, exhibition flare point, uh, exhibition flare drink 20 points. 10 points will be awarded for the recipes of each drink 10 points will be awarded for the bartending skill of each drink, procedure, method, garnish, appearance, cleanliness. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there shouldn't be any excuse for losing those marks. That should be 20 standard points that you just get. Um, so that is basically making sure that you've made your drink properly, you've garnished it properly, you've shaken it if it's a shaken drink, you've built it if it's a built drink. You know what I mean? You're making a drink. You're a bartender. That is your job. So... If you're not making a drink that's drinkable, what are you doing here? Yeah. So making sure stuff goes on a bev nap, that kind of thing, I would think also drops into that category. Okay, so a quick overview of the deductions category. You're going to lose two points for a drop. Now, that is not including things like bev naps. It's not including things like straws and fruit. Uh, that is just if you're going to drop like a tin, a bottle, a muddler, something like that. Uh, 
minus one point for spills, uh, so that's anything that spills out of the bottle at all. Um, and they mention that it's worth using a video camera to record your routine and uh, just see if you can identify any spills, see if you, that's something that you can take out of your routine ahead of time. A direct break or indirect break. This is basically anything that would uh, break and contaminate your ice well or your station with your fruit and that sort of thing. If it breaks on the floor, it just counts as a drop, uh, assuming that it doesn't pop up to that kind of level and contaminate. Um, accidental empty bottle of flare. You will lose five points if you flare with an empty bottle by accident. If you do it on purpose and the judges think that that's what's happened, then you could be disqualified. Uh, missing ingredients in your drinks because you've obviously handed in your recipes to the uh, judges. Uh, you will lose five points if you miss out an ingredient. You will lose 50 points for missing a drink, so make sure, as I've said in the past, that making sure your drinks are completed is the main priority. And a rogue air fumble. Now this is uh, something I think is unique to the roadhouse, but they will basically dock you 10 points instead of 2 points for a drop if it goes out into the crowd because of the uh, sort of power that goes into the snatchers and that sort of thing. Um, so it's basically to ensure the safety of the audience. Uh, general rules is basically making sure that you are registered ahead of time. There's no turning up on the day and hoping. Um, no tracksuits or shorts, so you basically got to be really nicely presented on the day uh, because you are basically representing the roadhouse. Uh, making sure that you've got your music available on CD. Uh, they do say that you can use an MP3 player or an iPod if their cable's working, but you're not going to know ahead of time if that's the case or not. So be on the safe side, bring at least two CDs with your music on and make sure they're tested ahead of time. Uh, no dry bottles will be used during the competition. Anyone using dry bottles disqualified. Uh, no syrups, so that's basically, I would guess, to ensure that A, you're not using something really syrupy that won't spill out of your bottle, and B, that you're not uh, going to leave the bar all sticky for the next bartender. Uh, pour spouts, you basically got to bring your own for the exhibition, and it's uh, a free-flowing pour spout. Um, and obviously your liquids also need to be clean, clear, and no debris. Uh, you can have two barbacks with you on the stage, which uh, I would highly recommend everyone has a couple of barbacks. If you haven't got anyone going down with you, uh, the guys at Roadhouse generally very, very accommodating, and uh, other competitors will normally barback for you. Um, registration at 5pm, so make sure you get there on time. They do provide t-shirts. Uh, but if you are going down as a flair bartender who is sponsored by anyone else, you're welcome to wear sponsor t-shirts. Now we will try and put together a sponsor's t-shirt for the flair project. If you donate a move, I will get your name put on the back of my shirt. If you are a bigger sponsor, if we're working somehow together in a bigger way, then I will try and get you a logo either on a sleeve or on the front or whatever. We'll work all that out a lot closer to the time once we know what's going on. Only the competitors are allowed in the background, uh, in the in the back area for the practice area. Uh, that's just due to the space. All drinks are out of 20 points, no fire flare, uh, minimum of half an ounce of liquid in your exhibition bottles, half full for your working flare bottles, clear spirits to be replaced with water. Now this is really useful actually for the bartenders because if you uh, do have a spill, it goes in your eye, you're not going to be blinded by water for five minutes. Uh, spirits will really sting and you'll be out of action basically. Um, all rules and regulations can be changed before the event so it's worth keeping in touch and obviously making sure that you give them a valid email when you register and uh, things like your hotels and stuff, all your own responsibility. Um, so that basically comes down to the end of the rules for what you need to prepare, there's a few other bits about um, approaching the judges afterwards if you've got any queries or if you want to break down or anything like that. Uh, they are sponsored by Stolly, so there are some requirements with Stolly Vodka. Because they're a sponsor, you will need to use Stolly for your working flare drink at least once. Uh, you can use other bottles as well. Um, but also they will provide stolly bottles if needs be. There is a stolly stall, there is a compulsory flare move and a pour with stolly. Um, and it says that for some months they may use an alternative flavour of stolly which is all fine. 
Uh, you do need to supply your drinks yourself. Uh, there are points, 10 points, for the creativity of your drinks. So it's worth putting a little bit of effort in ahead of time. This is all stuff you can do as prep and basically you're going to get those points before you even step on the stage. So it's well worth maximising them. Uh, in between, this is important, each bartender gets four minutes to set the stage ready for their routine. Um, and it's been noticed, obviously, that obviously the Roadhouse wants to keep everything moving and they don't want it uh, dragging as people are moving from one routine to the next. That four minutes is all the time you get. You've got a five-point penalty for every ten seconds after that. Uh, you go over that prep time, and that basically means um, just have everything ready. So when you get called to the stage, as soon as you step on that stage, you put everything in the wells, and you're good to go. You need to also bring all your own equipment for Roadhouse. They don't supply... I mean, I'm sure there'll be stuff there, but if it's not the stuff that you used to as well, so safe to just bring everything you will need to touch on that day. Um, you need to provide your recipes to the judges ahead of time. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, prizes, 750 for uh, first place, £750. £200 for second place, £100 for third place. Pretty good. Uh, third place, you'll probably spend that on your beers afterwards, but uh, there we go. Um, some important stuff, if you um, if you get through to the finals and things as well, um, they don't change the lighting for any competitors. Uh, not a massive issue for most people, but I'm sure there are certain people that that is a huge thing for. Um, the judges for Roadhouse this year, Tony Adams, who actually came first the time that I came second at the TGR Fridays flare competition. Um, some wicked flare that he does with his apron and catching bottles in there. Uh, Colin Griffiths, who I've not really uh, encountered in the past, uh, but I've got a feeling I found him on Facebook recently, and uh, jo uh, Dave Ginge Reynolds. Uh, now, Ginge is a former winner of the Masters of Flare and... Awesome bartender, does a lot of two item stuff, bottle and tin, um, and that kind of thing. Very old school flarer, so I'm not too worried about not being huge on the multi bottle stuff. And then it just goes to the cocktail recipes, so you can basically just fill these in on your computer and print them off and pass them on to the judges, and, and that's kind of it. So, guys, please submit your flare moves. Uh, record it in this kind of format, so it's landscape, so I can add it all together at the end and make a wicked video collaboration between yourselves and me. Um, and, yeah, just join us at theflareproject.com. Um, if you've not joined us already on Facebook, join us on Facebook. We smashed a 1,000 likes this week, and let's keep the momentum going. Um, so it's facebook.com forward slash bartender hq we're at bartender hq on twitter we're on instagram at bartender hq pics and i've been putting a bit of my practice videos on there this week um and you can also find the youtube channel go to bartender hq.com forward slash youtube and that will take you straight to our youtube channel and make sure you subscribe um in the meantime guys uh, i've been david for bartender hq and the flare project.com I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to the bartenderhq.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at bartenderhq. So in the past I've used music like uh, the automatic monster. Um, I hope you guys know what that song is. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? I'm gonna cut that out.